morning folks thanks for tuning in um, we've got a new tripod now which is desk mounted which is on that's your side of what's going on so that I don't do this when the camera's behind me so what have we got today well thanks to Uncle Jared again we have this little 060 and we also have let me move that one out of the way we also have this now the little 060 here is just in for a general service um, and a little bit of a check over however this one unfortunately it's motor turned around but the wheels don't um, 99% certain when I take this apart it's going to have a plastic worm gear on the motor and probably plastic cog on the wheels and one of them is probably split so let's crack on I'm gonna let the video run while I'm doing this I'll edit it later so if it looks a little disjointed you know why I basically can't be bothered to turn the camera on off so let's have a look at this little fella um, well, first of all just check whether I've got some am I on? yeah uh, you can hear that folks can't you screaming its head off and absolutely nothing happened with the wheels so there's your proof that one is definitely an issue I'll just check this one I always like to make sure before I start what are the, you know, do they go, do they not go what do they sound like just gives me an idea so let's try this and hold a little bit Oh, that definitely goes, doesn't it? A little bit on the noisy side, maybe, if anything, but it's a lemur. And unfortunately, lemurs are known for being somewhat noisy. And I think that's why some people just don't like them. Um, personally, I don't care. Um, to me, it's a train. If it's a train and it goes, what's the issue? So... Now I've heard loads of people say this in the past and I've thought what do you mean when you say it when well, I'm looking at it on the screen upside down because normally when it's over my shoulder um, I can pivot my screen to a point where it shows me the image in the same orientation today it's not so I am looking at it upside down so anyway let's see what we find here um, typical two flatheads and a Phillips that means someone's messed about with it before I think because somehow I don't see that you would have both of these and in my profession builder we hate flathead screws especially when you've got to change doors and they've been put on 40 years ago and they've got 17 layers of paint over them and they're a flathead and you scrape the paint off only to find that underneath it the flat head has been ravaged by somebody at some point to the point where it's almost impossible to get it off so if ever you have that problem folks and I know this has nothing to do with trains but if ever you do have that problem folks you're trying to take the door off and you can get the flat heads off install in install <laughs> invest in a screw extractor set um, you can buy them my favorite location for buying things like that is an outfit called tool station which I know is has depots all over the country and I know that because I've traveled all over the country with work and I always find where my nearest branch is um, you can get the stuff delivered via online free next day if it's over a tenner so have a look at that anyway stop prattling on about crap that's nothing to do with model railways Norman they're not here to listen to you I'm also not here publicising tool station I am in no way affiliated or sponsored by that company just start to clear that up <sighs> oh come on come off want to remove itself and it looks like it's because 
it's ridiculously long screw sorry now I am going to get my hands in the way even though I've switched cap and switched the tripod so that I didn't if I don't get all of this I'm never going to get it off oh, don't tell me it just slides off after that it does no it doesn't whether you can see that wait till I get it on the camera right put my hand behind it can you see that I don't think that's supposed to be split on the end there but anyway never mind so there we've got the bottom out of it screws to one side we'll lay that that way this sorry <coughs> so we'll just put it there drop the middle set and that's what you're looking at that's what's left of the underneath so take the shell away and what we've got left is just the motor sorry I'm a bit quiet I'm just in, just generally inspecting it and seeing what's what how it looks it doesn't look bad actually it's pretty good um, I'm just going to pop this motor I'll just do I'm sorry I'm doing this off screen it's just it's more natural light I will show you what I'm doing in a second ok right getting shot Norman right you can see the motor it pivots and on the back end right there there's a little clip that little clip sits inside this frame and what I find is if I use this put it just to the side of the center and just pop it it'll pop that clip out of its retainer and then that frees the motor up for you to just pivot it up and then you've got full access as you can see you can see all the gearing on the sides of you so we're going to check all of this and check the tension on this let me use something to point um, we'll check the tension on this here just to make sure it's holding that wheel down well typical lemur it's a little bit wobbly and I can see a few strands of hair in there which are never good so anyway I'll get started I'll get my gear together bear with me folks it's a good thing about doing live videos you can cock it up for the world to see right she doesn't want to give there she is so it does actually pull out um, I don't know why I forgot that I have done one of these quite a while ago I completely forgotten that that just slides out so I've just got to get these gears out hopefully that's in shot and there's the bottom one so they've got oil on them they just look a little a little messy um, it's kind of oil and bits of rubbish and junk and what have you so I'm just going to get all this stuff off make sure there's no more of this rubbish on here I just want to look in there so there's your proof look there you go, full of black rubbish 
and that was just from this area so I'll ditch them a minute and I'll just give these a little a little clean up and this is really difficult to do without getting in your way Anyone who does YouTube videos will agree that sometimes jobs are so much easier to do when you're not <laughs> trying to keep it in camera shot. Um, so when you people out there never happened to me yet but I'm sure it will come but when you people out there happen to say you know oh we can't see your fingers are in the way or you don't do it like that well it's probably because our fingers are in the way because we're trying to get the job done whilst showing you what, or trying to show you what we're doing um, and at the same time it's really difficult trying to do this thing without getting your fingers in the way or without doing things in a manner that just doesn't look correct but anyway never mind so you've seen the amount of rubbish and general junk that came off that um, I'm just going to take the front of the motor off now now keep your finger on it remember that I've just lost a screw I don't believe it remember that there are springs behind here springs that do like to ping all over the place so be careful so there's the brushes one's a little bit more worn than the other one that's a little strange never come across that before one spring's pushing down just a little harder than the other is so we're just going to clean inside this case just again just to remove any deposits that we don't want in there oh wow it's very black I'll show you in a second folks there that was just from inside this wow that's black <laughs> okay so we're going to just carefully remove the magnet we'll just pop that there for a second and I'm now going to clean inside that because that is probably going to be also very dirty and the good thing about using the lighter fluid is it does evaporate really really quickly so you don't have to worry about any residue or anything else like that being left on it or taken forever to dry look at that that's a bit of a mess to say the least but anyway that's just the inside I'll do the rest of the case bad some more on it but not bad so we've done that we've done that so we're going to put that on one side and just have a little look at the motor now as long as I can get this right on the screen you can see the scoring marker in it kind of in the center of it about here that's where your brushes are made in contact all in all it's not bad actually it's quite in, it's in quite good condition um, I don't really know what he's given me this one for. I think he said it was making a bit of a noise, which, as I said, is fairly normal for a lemur. Sorry, I'm off shot. I forgot what I was doing there. Um, I'm just literally going over the surface of this with me. Light the fluid. There is a fair bit of black on it as you can see which is never good 
Oh, the more of that you've got, the less electricity, the less, the more your electricity struggles to pass through. So I'll just have another pass over. Making sure on the motors, this is a three pole motor, so you've got three segments. Five pole, obviously, it's got five on it. So you just want to give that a little rub in there. Um, you can grab a, a little cocktail stick and just put it in. And just drive towards the edge. Just in case there's any built in deposits there that didn't come out when you use your clean and fluid but it normally will dissolve. So there you go, that might okay, we've got a problem. We've got a wire off. I know where it's come from. Let me just try and put this in short. You see we've got the wire here. There should be one attached to this side as well. So there's a little solder joint down there. So I'm gonna have to flick on the soldering iron just so we can get this reconnected right back. Um, as you can see, we now have two wires soldered back on. While I was waiting for my soldering iron to heat itself up, I did finish cleaning things up. Um, cleaned all the wheels. You don't need me to show you how to do that. It's still easy. I just do the same things as with the engine, really. Um, probably the one of the most important things is it's more for those who don't have all wheel pickup. Um, don't just clean the wheels that pick up clean all of them you know even in this case where this sets not even attached to the con rods um, they're still touching the track and if they're touching the track then their metal touching electricity they are going to get a little bit dirty granted they're not picking up but you know if you don't keep your, keep your wheels all of your wheels clean then you're just continually going to be cleaning your track and thankfully I don't have track to clean yet but every time I've seen it done it looks like a laborious task so let's get back to putting this back together then so what haven't I done yet right well I've cleaned everything I need to clean there but what I haven't done is checked over these to see what they're like for contact now to be fair pretty good actually um, I don't really feel a need to do anything with those I really don't I mean we all we all saw at the beginning how well how, how you know it got its power got its speed so it's fine Um I suppose if anything the only thing he did complain about was it was a little bit noisy so on that basis I'm just going to check these now Lima vehicles uh, are known for being noisy, I said this at the beginning and um, I watched a video quite some time ago and I always remember it and it was a guy, I think his channel's called Mike's Movies if I remember rightly and Mike knows a hell of a lot more about motors than I do but the one thing that I did learn from Mike was that um, Lima weren't a hundred percent um good at inspecting things shall we say particularly these cogs which were known to have little bits of swarf hanging off them and whatever else and occasionally there would be molding parts that would clash with others so i'm gonna have a look at this now i've heard you've heard me all before say i can't see i can't see i can't see well <laughs> I wear glasses and to be honest with you, glasses are not overly clever. I think my eyes are getting worse. So I'm going to use one of these. Just to, in an effort to help me look. So I, I am doing this off screen because I tried to position it while I was off camera. So you could see what I was doing and I couldn't. So bear with me folks. Just while I check through this. See now there is. Um, if I could, I could find a way to show you this. I'm not sure quite how, because obviously I want to get on with this job. But 
Um, forgive the intrusion with the camera movements. I'm going to try some here, and I have no idea whether it's going to come out or not. But let's give it a shot. Now then, can you see at the top? There is definitely 100% one of the teeth there that is complete, well there's two actually, that are completely, just trying to make sure this comes out right, not sure it will, but there's two of the teeth at the top there are completely misshapen. That will be well, uh, get you back on where you should be. Anyway, so as I'm saying, there's two teeth that are, let me try and do, even if you can just see where I'm talking about. Right, okay, so I've got, I've got a tooth here that's got swarf on it, and I've got a tooth here that has as well. So there's, that's probably one of the reasons why it's making so much bloody noise, because when it goes to click in there's another one here I can see yeah none of these are particularly clever so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put you on hold a second I'm gonna get a file out a little I've got some jewelers files and I'm just gonna file these down while I'm looking through this score because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see them um, and check it out let me just have a quick look from the back um, I can't remember if Mike showed them on Mike's movies but if you're watching my channel and you really couldn't see it because of the cowboy unprofessional way that I did it go and check out Mike's movies and look for a uh, thing about Lima I can't something to do with Lima locomotives but he took one that made a real row and made it quiet and this is the first time in all honesty I mean and I must watch that video maybe a year ago this is the first time I've had a, a Lima motor uh, with all the issues that he spoke about. It's quite a mess. It's no wonder it makes a noise. Um, let me just look at the little code. What's that looking like? Yeah, there's one where we've got excess plastic at the bottom, which means the teeth won't engage properly. There's another one and another one and another one, ah oh, jeez he was certainly right, they weren't fussy I mean if you're like me and you've got really bad eyesight you are going to need one of these magnifiers to look at this kind of thing because I wouldn't have picked these up with me even with my glasses on, they're a mess so, on pause folks, back in a little bit notice because on the back there's some moulds little rings um, just don't put this to the camera. Ow, just bent my finger on my lamp. Right there. Those. Now there's actually you see there, I'm pushing on the edge of that mould. Now I don't want that there. Because if I haven't pushed on the edge of that mould with my file and I think it's an obstruction well at least that's my thought so I'm going to just quickly switch from that to a flat file so if I can get it in well I figure out where in shot is on this camera or on this new tripod -y thing so let me try and get it towards you there one two three you can see that I've either now cut them or I've filed them down. So I'm just going to clean up this centerpiece now. And get all the rubbish out from between the little cogs there. And then we're going to do exactly the same operation on the little one. So I won't bore you um, and make you watch all that because you've just made me watch a complete cock up of this. So we'll come back and see you in a bit. Light on it. So we'll start with that. Put the motor back in where it belongs. Just drop it in like that and then 
I'm going to put the sorry I'll do it the other way around put the cover plate back right. on so you've got the motor in you're just going to pop this retaining cap on when I find the centre of the motor there she is right magnetic screwdriver as I said to you before I magnetise all my screwdrivers just because it makes it easier to pick things up it should also stop you losing screws but unfortunately in my world that's not the case because I'm really good at dropping stuff as you saw at the end of this video because I dropped one of these I went past me and fling, fluck it, flucked it off flick, flinged it off whatever you want to call it so okay right stop rabbiting on Norman oh, now I picked my springs up with it by mistake so we're just going to lift these okay and then out with my little pair of nips hang on folks um, I'm going to keep well, I am going to keep hold of it I want to keep that one I don't see anything wrong with that one can go in the bin and I'll go on about should have spare parts and what have you I've got an awful feeling that when I come to do that little 040 that I am not going to have a spare worm gear or the worm that fits around the wheel I'm pretty certain of that but I might be wrong because I do have a lot of stuff that I forget I have so oh come on there is a right and a wrong way these are shaped the other ones had a stepped bottom on them these are just shaped so please make sure you put the smaller end in first so then onto the spring pop your spring in not in there come on no <coughs> doesn't want to go I hate doing springs they are so fiddly and they also have a nasty habit of going wherever they want so we've got the spring in now I don't know if you can see that on the camera it's sitting proud so this is my little tip if you like sorry but I'm just looking for somebody's been rifling my stuff um, where is my little screwdriver clutch screw we gone I'll use that one so little tip insert a flat screwdriver through the spring about three quarters of the way up and push it down and brilliant like I said folks springs are springy and light to go pop so we'll try that again actually I was a little bit too high that's why I was hesitant a bit too low push it put it in near the top of the spring gauge it by how much spring you've got left hanging out when you're finished and then just close this down over the spring but if you look if you look at this look how much play I've got there between the motor and the spring holder you don't need to have it squashed flat no need at all that's perfectly enough there that's quite a long spring so I've compressed that probably by 50% already no need to go overboard so okay so we've got that one in then we'll go for number two which thankfully went in reasonably okay so again insert your script ah, 
come back here take two they are very fiddly and I'm sure out there somewhere somebody else has got a much better idea but I don't know ah, this is just how I do it now the only thing with this is I'll just turn this a little so you can see better I'm not 100% happy with how this sits so you've got to be careful when you're doing this that you don't sorry I, I will show you in a minute what I was doing um, I wasn't happy with the way that this was sitting over the spring and it meant that to me there was a possibility that the spring could pop out so what I did was I pushed my screwdriver underneath there put my finger on the front and then levered the spring up, up levered this up over a little bit so there you go that's kind of it really it's back together so we're just going to push this back gently and we'll just give this a little bit of assistance to this side and this was the side with all the cogs so if you remember we had to clean these things up these things and off camera I was showing my wife what I was talking about um, and she was she's not a model railway fan but she got what I meant so we're just going to gently put them all back together so a little cog first big cog has another smaller set underneath it there make sure it goes down over because obviously the point of it is it's got two jobs to do now bear with me folks because I'll have to do this a little off cam right. its purpose is to attach itself to that cog on the motor sit on that pivot and drive the other cog so when I've talked about those three bits of swarf if you look at that I don't know well you can see that I haven't got it on yet there it is if you look at that I'll go in the camera yeah if you look at that look how close they sit together you tell me that those three bits of swarf that were on there would not grind on that bottom one or cause it to be erratic jump around call it what you will but I think that that was a bloody good idea of course the other thing I think is really a good idea was cleaning all them teeth so that they meshed with that one properly because it's trying to drive that which is trying to drive that now the bottom one was perfect there was nothing wrong with it so we've got that back on there we now just need to reinsert the restraining clip so add the pliers move the cable out of the way she comes so I'm just going to try and lever it up a little bit I hope you can see this I don't know whether you're in shadow or you'll have to forgive me folks I'm new to all this Cecil B. DeMille stuff I'm not new to it but I'm still trying to figure out the best way to show you what I'm doing but there you are she's on it's located in the centre pin where I want it this is back in place so we've cleaned all of that, all of that, all of that. We took the swarf off. Yes, that still moves about. Probably not a great deal I can do about that because I did off cap did bend this arm down a little bit to apply a little bit more pressure. But anyway, I'm happy with that. So we're just gonna try and coerce this motor back in. Now she did take quite a bit of getting out. Um I'm not sure why it took so much coercion, normally a little bit of a flick with a screwdriver and it's job done. 